What's up, people? Matthew Belcher, 8 This is Tube Notching 101, tech tip video. I'm gonna keep these guys coming for you, keep y'all in the knowledge. But anyways, uh, when you're notching tube, uh, the, the thing that'll help you the most is the tools you have on hand here. So, key indicator is an angle finder. So, when you're notching tube, you've definitely gotta know the angles. 90, that's, this thing is a manual, it'll show you everything. We also have a digital one here. Turn it on, zero it out, same thing. Either way, it still, it still finds your angle. You have to be able to identify angles when you're fabricating a roll cage or chassis or whatever you're building. Uh, another handy tool, medfordtools.com. They make these little snap rings that pop on. Boom, look at that. Nice and easy. It gives you a good straight line when you're gonna mark the tube. But not only that, it gives you a zero indicator. If you can see that zero, also a 45 and then a 90. So they're very handy to have around. They make them for different tube sizes being 1.5 inch, uh, 1.25, 1.75, whatever it is you're working on. We use a lot of 1.75 in, in the shop here. So we've got a 1.75 on this piece of tube. Another little handy thing that Medford Tools makes is this little, uh, I guess, top identifier. I don't know what you'd call this thing, but if you go to their website, you can see it. But basically it's spring loaded. So you need to find the, basically the top point when you're notching by hand. And if you can see how that thing sandwiches down there and then it gives you a good indicator point uh, being the notch uh, where the top of the tube actually is. It's spring loaded. So it gives you a pretty, pretty exact uh, identifier there. So what we're gonna do, uh, and we're not building a roll cage or anything like that. So we're just marking this piece of tube. We're gonna notch piece of tube and then show you all how to notch it. Um, but mainly what we're trying to do is tell y'all how to, how to do it. There's probably a lot more videos on the internet, but it's not the 8 built way, so uh, this is 8 built. you know what I mean? So anyway, we're gonna set it right here, and we're just gonna go at this angle. It's a random angle. I don't know what it is. Set it on the tube. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna get our angle finder. I like this one. This is the one I probably use the most in the shop here. Uh, I don't know the brand name on it. I got it from Trick Tools, tricktools.com, I believe. Uh, but I use this one probably more than I use a digital one. Uh, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is find the angle on what you're cutting. So you can either set it in on the inside, however you wanna do it more accurately. Uh, I like to run it, kinda use both hands and set it right there, set it right there. Pull it back. Like I said, this isn't going in a roll cage. We're just giving you guys an instructional, instruct, instructional video. Looks pretty square on this one. Looks pretty square on this one. I'm gonna tighten up my dial indicator here, or my dial. It's not an indicator, but you know. All right, so <clears throat> roughly, guys, and my tube moved, but anyway, so roughly, when you're looking at an angle finder and when you're notching tube, 90 degrees would be zero, meaning that if this is your bottom tube right here and this is your top tube coming in, that would be a zero degree notch. Okay, so we're 10, 20, 30. We're basically one, two, 32 degrees. We're 32 degrees on this tube, on the angle, and like I said, that's because that's zero. And you'll see when we go over to the, the notcher why that is zero, but you always got to count backwards. That'll kind of mess with your head if you're not familiar with it. Uh, but once you get used to it, you figure it out. So the next step, we're on 32 degrees. My tube moved a little bit, but I don't think it's enough to mess with it uh, because all it did was roll. Next thing you want to do is you want to look exactly down from the top. That's where this thing comes in handy. You set it down, if you can see, boom, that basically clamps it to the bottom. This would be your top, meaning your top point looking directly down. And then if you look from the top angle, eye angle when you're marking these things is, is kind of crucial. So you want to make sure you're looking directly down from the top and this would be the intersecting point. Okay, so this bottom tube runs through and intersects with this tube at a 32 degree angle right there on that point, And this is the top. So we know that's true. What I like to do is grab a handy dandy uh, fat ruler. I don't like a flimsy ruler when I'm doing these because you can set this down. You set it right on top of the tube 
And if you can see what I'm doing here, if you set it right there, right? And you can kind of tell the distance just by using your eye. Your eye's everything in this game. Lines are everything, but basic spacing, right? So, boom. So we know that is a true top. And then we know that this is our intersecting point. So I'm gonna take my handy dandy Medford tools. I'm gonna pop that on here. I'm gonna draw my intersecting line, okay? So as a rule of thumb, people, uh, if you're cutting a 45 degree angle or more, meaning 45 degrees to 90 degrees, then you're basically gonna use the bandsaw or whatever you're cutting your tube with and you're gonna cut flush with your intersecting point. If you're going from zero degrees to a 45 degree angle, you're gonna bump out a half inch. And that's just kind of a rule of thumb. Uh, once you, you know, play in this industry or play with notch and tube, then you can kind of go quarter inch or three eighths, you get kind of used to it. But as a rule of thumb, as a rule of thumb, use that for reference. Half inch out if you're going 45 degrees or less, and flush cut if you're going 45 degrees or more. So we're going 45 degrees or less because it's a 32 degree angle. So we're gonna take the measuring stick here, mark it a half inch out. That's where we're gonna cut it on the bandsaw. That's our intersecting. That's where we're gonna cut it on the bandsaw. So now we're gonna walk over here. So, like I said, we were a half inch out. <clears throat> and the key to drawing this big line on the top is because once you're cut, right? I'll show you when you come to the notcher, but that's where you need, that's your top point, right? So you, you need to know your top. I've found it handy to mark it on the front face of the tube because when you go over to the notcher, I'll show you why. So we're gonna walk over here. This is the Bailey, I think it's a TN250, something like that. It's a Bailey tube notcher. Uh, this is the one we got in the shop. It comes in this little section. Of course, we built this whole uh, bottom manifold assembly, and I put these, I think it's a Rockwell uh, brake rotor here on the bottom, but it creates a pretty stable stand for it, and it also makes it mobile. I can turn it up, and I can roll it around the shop. So we've set it to 32 degrees here. Uh, come over here with the camera. But all tube notchers are different here. But most of them have a basically an angle finder, so you can set your angle. Like I said, we're going 32 degrees, so we're set at 32, and that's why it's got to be uh, relative into zero. I'll show you when I slide the tube in here. But you can set it depth-wise. That's why I like the TN 250, because you can go up and down with it, so you don't have to notch right in the middle of the tube. This is already set right in the middle, uh, and we've set it at 32 degrees. So, like I said, there's our top. And there's our intersecting point. So slide it through, snug it up just a hair. And also when you get to doing bigger pieces of tube, I like to get jack stands, pipe jacks and everything, you gotta support it, especially if you're doing frame rails or something like that, or a big, a big B pillar. Uh, you, you really need to support it so it doesn't put all the stress on this uh, tube notcher. And then I like to slide it forward can really get dialed in there on where it's supposed to be. Also, this mark on the top, that's an old mark. We were, we did, this is the second take of the tube notching tech tip video here, so just ignore this notch, all right, <laughs> or that line. But, so, when looking from this angle on the side, you want that hole saw to go right in line with your intersecting point, basically, that we marked because of where the tube was intersecting. The other one that we marked is running down and then it's either gonna be on the top or the bottom depending on how your tube notch is set up and depending on which angle you're setting it on. So from looking this direction, that's why that line is key because you have to keep that at a, a basically a 90 to your intersecting point so that you know exactly uh, the top or the bottom. So I'm gonna make sure everything's set right. like it I'm gonna snug it up not too tight just tight enough 
Double check everything. She looks to be good. I got this old DeWalt. She's a hammer drill, or not a hammer drill, but she's a, she's a good girl. I like to use a little bit of uh, lubricating oil. Uh, some guys probably use cutting oil. I like to use just motor oil, gear oil, whatever we got around the shop, because if it's smoking, you're getting too hot. You need to slow down a little bit. So we'll take it nice and slow. I always like to use a paintbrush. There's all kinds of metal chips in here. Just lube it up a little bit, all right? We're gonna go nice and slow. So a lot of times, depending on the angle that you're cutting, the hole saw won't make it all the way through. The hole saws are only so deep, so you'll hit it in this back end of the hole saw. So depending on how you're cutting, uh, a lot of times you got to come in here with an angle die finder, or I mean an angle cutoff wheel, not an angle die finder. No. All right, so <laughs> an angle cutoff wheel, and you come in here and cut this in, and then you can bend it out. We've only got this much tube on here. I might be able to try it with pliers. If not, I'll get the angle cutoff wheel in there. Also, another tech tip. Y'all ain't using motocross goggles to run a grinder. Y'all are crazy. Best thing I've ever found in my life. Keeps you, keeps you nice and protected and fog free. So as you can tell people, you don't have to go all the way through. As long as you make a good notch right there, then this will bend and pull out. Just like that. So now the hole saw can continue to go all the way through. Back the hole saw on, here we go. Also, you can probably tell, we don't run this thing in the shop all the day, all days, but uh, you can tell that we're a little off being from top to bottom because this top one sticks out a little bit less than this bottom one. So, notched all the way through it. Like I said, that's an indicator that you're not completely center or exactly center. We run that dragon a lot, so it's very rare that we actually notch by hand, but uh, we're still professionals. So all you gotta do, once you do that, come over here and clean it up. So, we have a 32 degree notch. Uh, out. All right. Only way to really check it is if we set it right there, snug it up, which is gonna be right there. We've got our angle finder that was locked on 32 degrees. Bam, look at that people. 32 degrees on the money right where we locked it at. So the next step would be to come over to this side or wherever you're notching it at, and then basically configure it from there. Uh, a lot of times you have one piece of tube stuck down on one notch, and the next piece of tube is up on. So what you gotta do is you gotta basically run it like here. Say we wanted to run down into this other piece of tube. I'd come in here and I'd set it like that. So you know your notch is, is tight from this angle, and then you basically do the same thing looking down from this angle. And if this is 32 degrees, this is a 90 degree. You can always do the math on that, which makes it play in your favor as well. So 90 degrees minus 32 degrees, that'll tell you that this one over here is gonna be 58 degrees. I think 58, yeah, 58, 32 is 90, yeah. All right, so tech tip, tube notching, set up your notcher correctly, take your time until you learn how to do it and get the appropriate tools, because if you don't have the appropriate tools, it'll create you a headache. It's a lot easier if you got the tools on hand. It's beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. Heybuild.com. Check us out.